Well, hey there, friends. I'm Sean Malone, founder and director of Crisis Response International, filming today, Hope in the Storm. This is where we take just a few moments, maybe a scripture, a few thoughts about how we have hope-filled lenses for the crisis that's all around us. And so I'm gonna jump into that today. I'm gonna talk about refuge, a few scripture verses on that. We're gonna be real short today, but before I do, I just want to just make a mention of a few things that are coming up. We have a cry responder training, Burbank, California, at the Gathering Place, February 10th. It's there on the cry website, you can register for that. If you know of people out there in the area, you know people in California. Usually, when we do trainings in California, people come from all over the state to come get trained. We don't do a lot of trainings out in California, maybe one a year. And so, uh, help us spread the word about that. We, uh, you'll see it out there on social media. You may get an email. Uh, spread the word, that'd be great. Cry Responders, we have such an incredible opportunity to be able to be trained, to be able to respond, and go out there and help people when they really need it most. We wanna give people that gift and that opportunity to be able to respond with us. Welcome into the Cry family, become a responder. And uh, so February 20, uh, 10th, also in March, for those of you who are looking for a little bit of adventure, love hiking, wanna reach unreached people groups, Nepal, in March, we're going. We're putting together a team. Gar Shelta is taking a team to Nepal. Uh, it's going to go back to the same place, uh, places that he went last year. We're going to go encourage and uplift the local church there. We're going to go meet unreached people groups. We're going to bring water filtration in, and we're going to bring in some very important digital assets uh, to help people and, uh, and just love on people really well. And uh, anyway, so yeah, that's on the CRY website as well. Visit that, find out more information. Better hurry up though, because that's coming up pretty quick. A lot of things need to get done uh, in order for you to jump on that trip. So, and lastly, before I jump in here, Refuge Builders Intensive, March 4th. I am so excited. I wish that you guys could be sitting right here and looking at what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the Blue Ridge Mountains out two big glass, uh, you know, picture windows here, snow covered everything. It's like winter wonderland up here. I love the Blue Ridge Mountains. I love this place that God has given us and we're completely relaunching everything. And this is the first event that we're doing. And I believe it's the right foundation to be able to move forward. And uh, it's gonna have a specific focus on, uh, places of refuge, but it's so much more than that. Now I'm going to jump into that and explain a little bit of that, but let's dive into a couple of scripture verses real quick. Hope in the storm. I want to release hope to you. There's so much to be hopeless about, but guys, we have the king and a kingdom inside of us and we are to be ones full of hope no matter what's coming. And uh, I truly believe that we are living in the most glorious days so the most glorious days to be alive. I believe that in our generation, we're going to see the Great Commission fulfilled in the context of crisis. And if that's you and you have hope-filled lenses, uh, we'd love for you to jump onto our team. And I, I think you'd be encouraged by some of the things we're going to share. So Psalm 91 in the Amplified Version. I love looking at the scriptures from time to time. In the Amplified and the Passion Translation, just shed some new light, some fresh uh, perspective on maybe things that we've read many, 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 many times over the years. So Psalm 91 amplified, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest. I love that. We're going to focus on rest during Refuge Builders. In the shadow of the Almighty, and then in uh, parentheses says, whose power no enemy can withstand. I love that. I love that. I love that self-talk. I love that adoration and that magnification of who God is. That's the way we need to approach God. You know, when we come to God in prayer, don't start off with your petitions and all your problems and everything that's wrong. You know, start off by, you know, thanksgiving and praise and then magnify and adore God for who he is. Magnify him over your problems. Then you can pray from a position of faith. Verse 2 says, I will say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and whom I rely. We have all of our eggs in, in that basket, right, guys? We depend on him. We, with great confidence, we can rely on the Lord. Verse 3 for he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings, 
you will find refuge. And I got that word refuge highlighted here because that's where we're going to leap off and just kind of break this down a minute because we're talking about refuge today. And it's going to bleed into refuge builders. And this gives us hope for the storm. So the original Jewish audience would have had specific uh, a specific image come to mind when hearing this phrase, under his wings. Constructed on the lid of the ark were two cherubim with their wings outstretched toward each other on the lid of the ark. The space under the wings and on top of the ark was called the mercy seat. The mercy seat of God. The mercy seat was where God's presence symbolically rested, where he met with his people, talked with his people. This is also where the high priest would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice once a year on the Day of Atonement, symbolizing that the sins of the people were covered by the mercy of God. In this sense, finding refuge under the wings of God means resting in the place of his presence and the understanding that there's mercy. Guys, that is absolutely good news. There's mercy. You know, this is also a picture of Christ's arms stretched out on the cross where we find forgiveness and where we find rest. First and foremost, we're looking for people here at the Cry Base who want to cultivate a place for God's presence. Guys, we do everything out of a place of rest, out of a place of mercy, out of the place of presence. And that's what we're going to dial into as we launch into Refuge Builders, this this first event uh, as we're relaunching the Cry Base. I think it's perfect. I really do. God gave us a strategy, gave us direction on how to do this, how to hit all of the fundamentals of what the Lord wants to do and express here at the Cry Base. First and foremost, we're people of his presence. We want people who have a heart and a desire to love on and adore Jesus and cultivate a place of God's presence. Everything flows out of that. It's the John 15, abiding uh, in the vine. All fruitfulness comes from intimacy. It's the place, uh, you know, where we want to do everything from. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. And it's a place of rest and a place of mercy. You think of what is a place of refuge? It needs to be a place of rest. It needs to be a place of presence. It needs to be a place of mercy. Think about, you know, Goshen in the Bible. It was a place of mercy where people found mercy, right? And so verse 9 goes on and says, Because you have made the Lord, meaning we actively made a decision and made the Lord our refuge, made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, meaning that this is the place we abide. This is the place that we dwell. No evil will befall you. No will any plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend you and guard you in all of your ways. And it says this in parentheses of obedience and service. Parentheses. They will lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You'll trample underfoot because he set his love on me therefore i will save him and you know I, I i look at this sometimes i look at psalm 91 and sometimes you know we get into this religious mindset you know we're in a unsafe situation we'll pray psalm 91 i think it's perfectly legal and fine to pray psalm 91 over your life but this verse right here verse 14 is the linchpin of all of psalm 91 because he set his love on me therefore i will save him because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, I will protect him and none of these things will befall you. And so it's about focusing our attention, our adoration, our love on the Lord, putting all of our eggs in his basket, so to say. That's what we're going to do here at Refuge Places. You know, that's the first thing we're, we're, uh, we're going to do at Refuge Builders Intensive is set our affection, set our gaze upon the Lord. And... Uh, so this is the key to refuge, our love for him, our adoration for him. You know, the other morning I was looking at these scriptures in Psalm 91, and then I turned and I looked outside and the whole sky was red. I mean, it was magnificent. It was absolutely beautiful, breathtaking moment. Uh, mo uh, moment. Uh, sorry, I'm fasting, and so I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. But uh, a red sky, it was absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, and then I was led to Acts chapter 2. And which is interesting, I began to read in verse 19, I'll bring about wonders in the sky above and signs, attesting miracles on the earth below. 
blood and fire and smoking vapor. I'm looking at this in the context of Psalm 91, looking at this red sky, reading the scripture, Acts 2, 19 in front of me. I'm like, Lord, I know you're speaking to me right now. This is speaking about a time period in history where crisis is in increasing on the earth. You're pouring out your spirit. There's those, there's a there's a, uh, a remnant, if you will, who have set their affections upon you and their attention upon you and have made you their refuge, their dwelling place. You know, the sun will be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And again, it's just speaking to this time period in history where crisis is increasing and God's pouring out his spirit and all of these things are taking place. And it says this in verse 21, and it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, and then again in parentheses, check this out, it says invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Jesus shall be saved, rescued spiritually. I absolutely love that. I was just like leaped off the page of my heart in terms of what a refuge is. And it was like the Lord was just stamping or sealing something in my heart in this moment and just saying, yes, this is what you need to do. Refuge builders, the cry base, this is resetting the foundation. And for those who want to come learn about building refuge and may go do it somewhere else, seal this on their heart. The love of the Lord and the adoration of God, the resting place under that place of mercy. This is the first thing. This is the, the foremost thing of, that should be on our minds in terms of building refuge. And, uh, and this will be the main thing that we go after during, uh, during the Refuge Builders Intensive. And just to kind of expound on this just for a just quick minute, and this is going to come in for a landing here, but, you know, the Refuge Builders Intensive, it's going to be built into three main silos, okay? And so we're going to have the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical. The spiritual aspect of this is going to be adoring Jesus, cultivating the presence of God, going for it in the prayer room, you know, uh, getting uh, really good, sound theological teaching and training and spiritual things. You know, we got a lot of awesome trainers lined up. I can't wait. We're going to be announcing them uh, throughout the next couple of weeks on the uh, on the actual webpage. Uh, but then also the second silo is the emotional component of this. Uh, uh, what is a refuge in terms of emotions? We need to be thinking about this. How do we take care of people emotionally, cultivate a place of healing and actually becoming a refuge ourselves. Meaning, hey, we all got to get healed up, but we got to get these tools on board so that when people come, that we know what to do with them. We know how to deal with the issues. We know how to quickly bring them into a process of discipleship and healing, pull the right tool out of the tool bag and apply it in that situation. And, and again, whether that's for a mass event where you know people are fleeing refugee type situations, mass casualty type thing, or mass national thing, or just specifically here at the Cry Base in terms of member care. And you know, one of the things that we're wanting to do here is we want to move the admin operations off the base, the deployment operations off the base, move that down to the Charlotte Fort Mill area where we have a bunch of staff there, get another uh, building down there and warehouse for all of that because it's just a much better place, centrally located, Charlotte, the airport, all of that, uh, bigger volunteer base down there. But then make the cry base a place of healing, a place of rest, a place of refuge, People come off deployment, they can come back here and get healed up. We can offer retreats, do our schools here, our ATS is here, and that becomes the focus. So on top of the spiritual and emotional components, these two silos, then we have the physical component of it. If you've been up here to the cry base before, you know, we have a farm, you know, we have 85 acres, we're up in the mountains, so many opportunities. Uh, to do different things up here, but we're going to focus on training and then actually building and standing these things up here on the base. We're going to be doing bees, bees and honey, sheep and cheese, uh, sheep and, uh, and the meat. You know, we're going to create a closed loop in terms of growing our food, growing our meat, growing our resources, and that's what we're sustaining ourselves on. It's going to take some time to get all of these things stood up and getting the right people who have a love for that and uh, want to be part of an ecosystem like that. 
But we got to practice these things, guys. And so for those of you who want to do refuge, you can get to come here and see what a closed loop like that looks like in process, how you build it, all of the steps. We're going to be building, uh, doing cheese. We're going to be growing chickens for meat. We're going to be doing eggs as well for chickens, chicken tractors. You're going to learn how to build them. We're also going to be doing gardens. So much fun too, as we're building up the schedule for this, the gardens and the time for planting indoor seeds and planting seeds in the garden, uh, it fell on the exact week on the calendar for this area that we had set aside. We just see the hand of God on this. So exciting. I'm looking out just out here out the window, out at our fruit trees. We got like 50 apple trees out there. We're going to learn how to prune, how to cultivate, how to make jams and things like that. And again, this is something that's going to, this is not something that happens overnight. It's going to be happening, unfolding over time. We also have somebody coming who's going to be teaching and setting up an aquaponics system. We're going to be doing butchering, curing meat, smoking meats, food uh, preservation, and a lot more. We got, uh, you know, lots of training as well on the emotional side, different components. I can't announce them yet because we don't have them confirmed, but we're, t we're speaking with them and getting dates locked in. But emotional training, we're going to be also covering chaplaincy stuff as well. Another big one emotionally as well, we're going to be doing uh, church-based trauma. How to get over your church-based owies, but then also... Uh, how to bring healing to others in that as well. And guys, right now, there's a lot of that out there, a lot of disappointment out there right now, a lot of different things going on. Breaks my heart, but those things are out there and it's going on. We've all experienced some measure of church, church trauma. And so we want to be a place of healing for that. And so, you know, anyway, all of this uh, will train people's hearts, train people whether they want to, you know, go and do refuge somewhere else or they want to come here and be part of the cry staff, you know, and be part of the cry base here. One of the things that we're doing during this specific uh, quarter is anyone who like, hey, I want to come and be staff. Everybody is coming and actually going through the program. And that's how we're going to be running things up here. You know, it's going to be quarter by quarter. You're going through it and different people are going to have different levels of responsibility, but everybody's going through the program. This is what's happening at the base this quarter. Now, the following quarter, the summer quarter, it's going to be a completely different flavor, completely different flair. Some of the people who came to do refuge and want to continue to do those things will be able to stay, you know, as they apply and continue to be able to do those things. But there'll be an additional quarter where everybody's jumping into that quarter. There'll be discipleship, training, schools, and then there's going to be an ATS in each one of those quarters as well. So we're running three quarters. Anyway, that's my download on refuge places and hope in the midst of the storm. I hope that made sense to you guys. Like I said, I'm fasting a little bit up here and my kind of if you've ever fasted before you kind of get stumbled up on your words but that's okay hopefully that made sense hey look we love you guys can't wait to see you guys up here uh if you're out in california we'd love to just even come on out to uh uh, to the gathering place there in Burbank. We'd love to say hello to you. Laura and I are going to be out there for that training together. And then uh, sign up for Nepal if that trip is for you. And then uh, Refuge Builders, it's live. And the applications are really flying in as well. I, you know, We've had such a great response to this. And uh, just really tells us that we're on track with what's on the Lord's heart for this season. Anyway, I love you guys. God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic week. God bless. So long.